How are you going? Everyone loves drones. They're great for photography, videography, and most importantly, pornography. And when I bought mine, I thought I had picked the best options and accessories. But there's one thing normal consumer drones like mine can't do explode seven children in Afghanistan. Come on. So today, I thought I would add this feature to my drone. Now, the idea of kinetic bombardment has always interested me, which is where you just take something up really, really high and then drop it and rely on gravity to accelerate it to speeds fast enough to smash stuff. Many countries have actually experimented with this idea and the US Air Force wanted to create a system dubbed the Rods from God, which were telephone pole sized tungsten rods which would be dropped from a satellite in orbit and impact the Earth at 10 times the speed of sound with the force of a nuclear weapon. Now, I don't think I'll be able to get high enough with this drone to do that, but I can try copy another US monstrosity, these things called lazy dogs which were little metal darts that the US dropped all over Vietnam in the hundreds of thousands. And apparently, these traveled up to 500 miles per hour and could easily pass through people and penetrate nine inches of concrete. But this is something that every man claims they can do, so I'm not sure I believe it. But luckily, they should be pretty easy to make and test. They kind of just look like pointy metal rods with fins welded on the end, which I should be able to make using uh, a, a pencil sharpener. And that works on this soft, mild steel. But if I want these darts to actually penetrate things and not get blunt, I'm gonna have to make them out of this tool steel, which is much, much tougher. And this sucks. I don't think my little lathe is made for working on metal this strong. It literally screams every time I try to cut the stuff. And after an hour of the lathe and I chewing up expensive carbide bits, I had created this, a point. I spent like $30 on tooling to create a single point. Although it should be stronger than the mild steel at least. But I'm gonna to have to figure out how to be way more efficient with my time if I wanna drone strike the Vietnamese. So I checked the metal hierarchy of coolness and selected this 1045 steel, which is softer, but should still work. And this metal machine's way nicer on the lathe and also makes some very interesting looking and tasting metal shavings. I would describe it as being closest to facility pasta in shape and texture, as opposed to tool steel, which makes these big spaghetti style chips, which are always a little on the al dente side. But my favorite definitely has to be mild steel, which makes tiny chips similar to Rizzoni and is super gentle on the tongue. And in my last video, a lot of you pointed out that my lathe has a very important function which I didn't utilize, the auto feed. With one flick of this lever, the lathe moves on its own and does everything, essentially becoming a minimum wage worker, allowing you to just click, walk away and come back to some finished parts. And now I have this, and I just need some way to stabilize it. And after searching Bunnings for different metal things, I eventually found these, which when arranged in exactly the right way, form this. Oh, damn it. Um... Sorry, I, I meant this, which I reckon will make for some good stabilizing fins. So I just welded them all together into this bar and then cut it into little segments. and then welded it on top of the dart. And now this thing actually looks incredibly dodgy, but I fixed that problem when I welded this little hook on the top, turning it into a harmless Christmas tree decoration for Isis. <laughs> 
And if you're currently buying presents to sit beneath your Christmas tree, make sure you use the sponsor of today's video, Honey. Honey is America's number one shopping tool, which automatically searches for promo codes so you don't have to. See this little button at the top of your browser? That's Honey, and that's what saves you money. If there is any way to save money on your purchase, Honey will find it. How does Honey work, I hear you ask? Well, let's just say I'm buying the usual Christmas items, like a sword and some other stuff. When I'm at checkout, Honey scours the internet and applies the coupons and saves me money. Look at that, I just saved $10 on this skimitar. I love that money saving feeling. I've been using it for years on all my purchases and have saved so much money. It's so easy and works on all the sites you are already using. It's literally free savings. Do not miss out. So go now and add it to your browser for free at joinhoney.com slash I did a thing. That's joinhoney.com slash I did a thing. Okay, and after a full day of slaving away, I now have an arsenal of different sized darts, but I need a way to drop them. And my first thought was to create a hook kind of thing on the drone. And then if I accelerate the drone in one direction fast enough, the dart will just slide off. But that doesn't allow me to be very accurate. But then I realized another way. Drones have the ability to turn on and off lights. So all I need to do is make a claw mechanism that reacts to the lights being turned on and opens when I want it to. And to do this, I'm going to have to use a bunch of complex components like this Arduino Uno, a server motor, and something that reacts to light. Then I just stole someone's code from the internet and modified it a bit to suit me. And created this. And now, when I shine the light on the moth, this little server motor opens and closes. Which is great, but I need it to be much smaller and lighter if I want it to fit on the drone. So I'm going to have to create my own circuit board and do some soldering, which I absolutely hate. Especially soldering circuit boards this small. The soldering wire never flows where I want it to and then I always burn the components myself and then end up inhaling smoke. <laughs> and this whole process just makes me feel like a giant with absolutely no dexterity. I feel like I'm giving a haircut to an ant. But after a couple of attempts, I finally created this, a professional looking circuit board. Then I just stuffed all of it into this 3D printed cradle, which perfectly snuggles against this crack in the drone right here, which positions the light probe right in front of the drone's hole. And if I thought the little metal dart looked dodgy, this drone with an unknown black box, duct tape and wires hanging off it looks a thousand times worse. And after a quick test turning the drone's light on and off, it works and moves this little latch which will release the payload. So let's go outside and test it to see how it drops things. Now before I throw a dart onto myself, I thought I would try dropping some harmless things first, like water balloons and an anvil to test its accuracy. and I decided to take it up to 10 meters for the first drop. Okay, three, two, one. Hey! Which was actually pretty accurate. It was only off by half a meter. And then took it up to 20 meters. So I tried again. And it's very clear this thing is going to be pretty hard to aim. I literally had to try and head of the water balloon to get hit. But I think I have a brilliant idea for aiming it. Lasers. If I can put a laser on the drone pointing down, I can see exactly where the drone is located in relation to the ground. But I quickly gave up on this idea after blinding my left eye. Instead, I'm just going to rely on the GPS on the drone and try and position it that way. Now it's maths time. 
So I just asked someone else to do them for me. And William Osman made me this neat little graph, which shows that I would have to drop my dart from 600 meters high to reach terminal velocity of 432 kilometers per hour, which is a little too high for my yard, as I already made a couple of holes in the roof in my last video, and I don't really want to make any more. And I do have the option of just doing what America does and going down to the local primary school, but then I discovered that it's school holidays. So instead, I asked you guys on Twitter if any of you have some land I could drone strike. And lucky for me, Clavenmore responded, who gave me permission to travel two hours down the coast to their property and drop stuff on it without having to worry about damaging anything or anyone. <laughs> this horse is definitely gonna be a prop horse. <laughs> We're dropping shit here. So it's not your horse, so it's, all, so it's all right if it gets killed with a drone then? Is that, is that what you're saying? <laughs> and after scaring the horse away, I took the drone up to 25 meters for its first drop. And that was pretty great. I managed to hit the barbecue plate, but did absolutely no damage to it. So I reset the drone and took it up to 50 meters. was surprisingly accurate and only missed the plate by around a foot, which gave me enough confidence to go up to 200 meters and see how inaccurate it was. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of terrifying. The camera's we'll back not even... We'll and it's dropped. I, I can see it. I can see it. Falling. It's wobbling. Yeah. I think it hit the grass. So awful. And I have no idea where that one landed. And after almost killing the horse, we decided to change location and target and see what it does to this car. The wind's blowing. The wind. Oh, towards the house. Yeah. Perfect. Which is pretty dodgy, as the car is only 20 meters from the house. So we decided to be safe and drop it from a meter high to see how it would behave. Oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> and then felt confident to go up to 50 metres. Okay. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Yeah, it's falling. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> If it wasn't for the pad, it would have gone through. Yeah, a bit higher, it'll definitely go through that. Oh, look, there's a little penetrate. There's a Is little there? pokey um, <laughs> hole in here. Uh, and even from 50, it went through the metal roof, only catching on the interior liner of the car. And even though I got caught, I definitely wouldn't want to be sitting in the front seat. So I reset the drone and now took it up to 100 meters. Okay, 100, ready, three, two, one. Yeah, I can see it, come on, come on. Oh! That was on top of the whiteboard. Look how close it is to the GoPro. Yeah. Five centimeters away, 10 yeah. centimeters away from the GoPro. Oh, it's in there. Oh, it's caught on some metal in the, in the room. And that went through the window and got caught in the metal frame of the seat. So now I want to see how accurate I can be with it. So I positioned the drone directly above the window and went straight up to 100 meters and missed the first time and the second. 
and the third. And then this time, I got a direct hit. Rolling already? Come on! Yes! Oh, sh <laughs> Come on! <laughs> so it went all the way through the window. And where is it? Oh, it's down. That is amazing. Oh, it's kind of stuck in there as well. I mean, it wouldn't hit you in the passenger seat, but... It, yeah, if it hit you in the leg, it'd take your foot off. You'd lose a toe. It'd suck. <laughs> Love my toes. Which went straight through the window and embedded itself in the floor. Well, it is stuck in there hard. And with that last shot, I ran out of drone battery. And there you go. I don't really know what this test showed. The drone was incredibly hard to aim, but I now have a device that can take a man's toe off from 100 meters. Take your toe off, Yannick. So scary. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that, please subscribe and check out some of my other videos.